Um, good afternoon, folks. Those of you in the States, uh, good evening to those of you uh, uh, in the United States. Uh, good good afternoon to those of you in uh, the, Un the United States and uh, and uh, and good evening to people in Liberia. It is one p.m. already here in the in the U.S. and um, I I thought to do this video. In my official capacity as the um, as the chairman of the Council of Patriots, uh, re regarding the situation uh, of my, uh, I'm trying to share this video, folks. It looks like I don't have to do it. You have to help me now, folks. You gotta let me know what is the volume like. Um, uh, re regarding my vice chair, Mr. Minipake Dumoy. Uh, Mr. Dumoy, uh, folks, as I said, let me know how the volume is. Um, and bear with me as I try to share this video. Or perhaps I don't need to share the video. You, often, you know how we often do it. We reach a thousand before I start to talk. I'm waiting to get to a thousand. Um, okay, my friend Darius says the video is okay. Thank you very much, Darius. Paps Brooks, thank you. Um, we are witnessing very sad, sad time in Liberia. Sad times. The ugly hair of dictatorship is beginning to show itself once again. In our democracy, uh, these things are expected when simple-minded, dim-witted people come to power. This is what you get. Uh, they resort; they, they have a sense of insecurity. They they cannot stomach uh, uh, discontent. They cannot stomach disagreements, and they resort to using. Brutal tactics and draconian to beat their uh, opposition into, in the hope that they can beat them into, into submission. Unfortunately for them, uh, this cannot work for us, and because we know these tactics and we know them all too well. Now, Mr. Minipake Dumoy is a decent man. He is a patriot of the first order. He loves his country. I am proud to have him as my immediate deputy in the Council of Patriots. Mr. Dumoy is the vice chair for administration. He is currently the acting chair of the Council of Patriots, working in direct concert with me and with the other officials of the Council of Patriots. I have implicit com confidence in Mr. Dumois' uh, ability to manage and mobile, mobilize. He has a vast, vast wealth of political experience in political organ organizing and community organ organizing. Minipake Dumois is one of the sharpest minds I know. One of the sharpest minds I know. Uh, he's a very lively chap. He's a decent guy. He's a loyal friend. When Dumois is in your corner, he's in your corner. When I went to Sierra Leone, my friend Minipake Dumoy did something very extraordinary that I never talked about. But today I believe I will talk about I will talk about it. Minipake Dumoy went ahead ahead of me. I trusted him implicitly. He knew. He knew of the plans for me to cross over into Sierra Leone. In fact, he and I masterminded the plans. And Dumoy decided to go across the border into Sierra Leone to test the situation. I will not tell you which particular border he crossed over into and who he met and the people he talked to. 
But I know what he did for me as a friend and as a brother. So I was still in Liberia when Dumwe crossed into Sierra Leone. He crossed into Sierra Leone. He assessed the situation. And he called me and was updating me. Every frequently updating me. His assessment of the situation across the border on the Sierra Leone side. His, 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 his experience on the Liberian side. And all of that. When Dumwe was convinced that it was safe, it was okay for me to go because he had done his reconnaissance. Then I got the green light. Many of you don't know this. It was my friend Minipaka Dumwe who went across the border. And I owe him a debt of gratitude for that. And I will talk about it. Somebody said I shouldn't talk about it. I will talk about it just so you know how well, how much I trust and appreciate Minipaka Dumoy. So Minipaka Dumoy is a friend. And, and, and after Dumoy did his homework and gave me the green light, uh, I went into Sierra, Sierra Leone. He didn't break any laws by going to Sierra Leone. I mean, he's, he's free to go. He went there through the right way. Did the assessment. I need to tell you this. So you, so you know. But I will say no further. But Mr. Duma decided to remain in Sierra Leone. He stayed there. And I said, Duma, but you can go back. I'm already on this side. I'm in Sierra Leone now. You can go back home. Duma refused to return to Liberia. For some reason, he kept saying, I, I, I just don't feel right. I want to stay in Sierra Leone until you board the flight and leave. He said that. And so I said, the reason I'm saying this is so you know. I'm making a point. The point I'm making is so you know what kind of person Minipaka Demoy is. He's a lawyer friend. He's a he's a he's a brother. And while Dumoy was in Sierra Leone, and people are telling me, oh, don't say that they could use it against Dumoy. Oh, you use it against Dumoy. Dumoy was a peaceful citizen who went over to Sierra Leone. Nothing wrong with that. So, so you understand the point I'm making? So stop telling me that, oh, you go put you in trouble. This is this doesn't put Dumoy in trouble. It does not put Dumoy in trouble. So Dumoy stayed in Freetown. It was many pocket Dumoy who organized the human rights lawyers for me. He got to them. He organized all the all the local human human rights groups. He got me the lawyer in, in Sierra Leone, in Free Freetown. He was on top of things, coordinating things. And while I was in detention, Dumoy was working behind the scenes. And you, you all need to stop saying this about Dumoy. Dumoy is a, is, a, is a revolutionary. You don't need to worry about him. This is not the first time that Mr. Dumoy has been, has been arrested. Dumoy was arrested before I was even arrested in 2014. He had been arrested already several years before I was arrested. This is nothing new to Minipaka Dumoy. I just want to say this to you. He is a tough man. He's a revolutionary. You, un you understand me? So he will, he will come out stronger and more fiery. That's who Minipaka Dumo is. So I just want to say this. So some of you don't know uh, the role Mr. Dumoy plays in our movement. And so I think as chairman, I need to inform you the role that somebody like Dumoy plays in our movement. So I'm just telling you, I know Dumoy. And I know Dumoy is a strong man. And I know Dumoy's spirit, uh, his spirit is not broken. I know he feels more motivated because I know how Dumoy thinks. I've known Dumoy for many years. Dumoy and I sat on the Costa, the Costa Dumoy show, as it was called. The Costa Dumoy show. We were co-hosts together. We started, we started the show and then at some point Dumoy left and he had to do other things in life. But we, we remain close ever, ever since. And we have been very, very good, good friends and, 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 and brothers. It was because of that that we impose or we repose that confidence in Mr. Dumoy to make him vice chair for administration of our movement because we trust him implicitly. And he is a strong man. So I just want to say to you, I'm not going to come here and start weeping and wailing. Oh, oh Dumoy, Dumoy. Mr. Dumoy is a strong fighter. He's a tough guy. You cannot break that boy. He's a brilliant man. And what I want to tell you is, is this. The government is stupid. I just watched the press conference by the by Moses Carter and 
and and and, and you and Eugene Fangon. What a complete mess. They are claiming that they went to Dumois' house to do the search and seizure. They found no weapons. No weapons at Dumois' house. Of course, I'm not surprised. If they had said they had found weapons, then I would have been surprised. But I'm not surprised because Dumois has no weapons. No weapons whatsoever. So they are claiming that they, they left, but then they found other things that they believe are incriminating. What other things will you find in Dumois' house? Dumoy talks whatever he thinks is appropriate, he will say it. Dumoy is not afraid of any any anyone. He's a he is a radical. You understand? You, know, you, you, you understand? Dumoy knows the people in the CDC too. He was there. He was one of the executives in the in the, in the CDC. Just before the elections, he, he decided to call it quits and he moved, he, he left them. So the issue here is. The issue here is this. I want to say this to you. I have not been able to speak with Dumoy, but I have spoken with our lawyer. Yesterday, Dumoy called me to say that the government had called him to present himself to the Liberian National Police for interrogation over his Facebook post, which I believe is harmless. Mr. Dumoy went ahead and he clarified what he meant. He said he was speaking in uh, he 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 was speaking metaphorically, and what he said he meant was that the AK-47 rifle is a symbol of resistance, and that is true. AK is a symbol of resistance all over all over the world. So, uh, Mister Mister Dumoy said he went on Facebook and he clarified that he didn't call for the government to be overthrown. He said Liberians need AK-47. Mr. Dumoy was speaking metaphorically. He used a metaphor. Mr. Dumoy went ahead and did a post to show how the AK-47 is a symbol that is placed, that is embedded within a lot of flags of resistance movements around, around the world. And resistance movements do not necessarily have to be militaristic. They don't necessarily have to be engaged in conflicts. So Mr. Dumoy clarified that. That I use AK-47 in the metaphorical sense that what Liberians need is to resist what's, is, what's happening in the country, to resist the broad the looting, to resist the, the, the president's acquisition of wealth, to resist. That is what Mr. Minipaga Dumoy meant. And that is what Mr. Minipaga Dumoy stated on his Facebook page. So ever since Mr. Dumoy has clarified that what he meant by using AK-47 is he was being metaphorical. And I agree with him because that is correct. When you look up many flags, tons of flags of many movements, the AK-47 has become a symbol of resistance. It is a symbol of resistance by, an, by oppressed peoples all over the world against systems that subjugate them to poverty, to indignity, and to hardship. And that is what Mr. Dumwe meant when he used the, the word AK-47. Mr. Dumont did not go further than that to say, let's take up arms and remove the government. He did not say that. That would have been an all a, 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 a downright uh, treasonal or treasonable comment. But he did not say that. AK, uh, Dumont said, we need AK-47s. That's what he said. AK-47s. We need to stand up. We need to resist. That is what Mr. Minipaka Dumoy said. And in the context of free, free, free speech and citing uh, uh, metaphors as Mr. Dumoy did, he did nothing wrong. His comment is absolutely harmless. Mr. Dumoy also went further to say that I am not a threat to, uh, to this country or to our democracy. The real threat to democracy, which was regurgitated by Eugene Fagon re uh, just uh, a, a few moments ago in that uh, live uh, uh, interview I just watched, Mr. Dumoy said the real threat to our democracy is the is 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 rampant corruption in the government. The president amassing wealth while the people are suffering. That's a real threat to our democracy. And and it is true because John F. Kennedy said, eh? John F. Kennedy Kennedy said, uh, 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 a free nation, any any nation that cannot help the many who are poor can never save the few who are rich. So when so few people have so much 
and so many have so little that is a threat to uh, the security of the country. Now, a security professional who happens to be a Liberian security professional once said these words to me, and I shall never forget these words. He said to me, he said, Costa, there are two things. There is a, the security of the state and the state of security. Now, what Mr. Dumay was essentially saying is that what is the real threat? The real threat is the security of the state is more important. The security of the state and the state of security. So which is more important? Security of the state or state of security? The security of the state has to do with the men and women who carry guns, the paramilitary and the military infrastructure. That's the security, I mean the, the, the security of the state. Now the state of security has to do with the economic and social well-being of the people. Now any government that prioritizes the state of security that people have schools to send their kids to, that people have hospitals decent enough to go to when they forsake, that people work and can get paid, that economic opportunities are created for people to advance themselves, that is what you call the state of security. Now, once you invest and focus and prioritize the state of security, you don't have to worry about the security of the state because once people are taken care of, once people are okay, they're not going to be concerned about trying to bring the system down. So essentially what Mr. Dume was saying the real threat the real threat here is the people who are undermining the security of uh, the state of security they are undermining the security of the state and undermining the state of security i hope you understand that so fellow liberians this i want to say to you many pocket domoy will be free our lawyer, Councillor Philly Kanga, the same lawyer that represented Yeke Koluba, or still is representing Yeke Koluba, uh, has informed me, I've, I've, I've been in touch with him, he is drafting a writ of habeas corpus. The government cannot hold Mr. Dumoy more than 40 hours. Under our laws, under our laws, there is a writ called habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is a writ that cannot be suspended even under a state of emergency. It is one of the few, I think one of the only two rates under our laws that cannot be suspended during a state of emergency. The rate of habeas corpus is that when the state holds you, this rate can be filed to demand the state to produce your living body to a court. In 2015, when the Ellen government arrested me and held me beyond 48 hours, which is a statutory period, my lawyers filed a writ of habeas corpus and the government was forced to turn me over to the court. Our lawyer, the COP lawyer, is drafting a writ of habeas corpus and that writ will, will be filed immediately when the government uh, shall have held Mr. Dumoy for more than 48 hours without a charge. Now, we are informed that as I speak, there has been no charge brought against Mr. Menepake Dumoy. Absolutely no charge brought against Mr. Menepake Dumoy. He has been held at the Liberian National Police Headquarters. They are wondering, they are, they are trying to conjure up something. They said themselves in their own words that they found no weapons in Mr. Dumoy's home. I mean, in Mr. Dumoy's home. And instead, what is claimed to have found is something interesting. Whatever that interesting thing is, I don't know. But no charge has been brought against Mr. Menepake Dumoy. Our lawyer, Councillor Finn Lekanga, is drafting a writ of habeas corpus that will be filed if and when the government does not release Mr. Dumoy within 48 hours, which is a statu the statutory period. We know our rights. We are not like the idiots in power. We know better than they do. And they must understand that. So we are working to ensure that our vice chair for administration, Mr. Minipaka Dumoy, has his rights restored and he can move about freely and he, he can do what he loves to do. Now, I want to say, I want to say this to you. What I, what I want to say this to you is that, look, let me tell you something. George Weir is an idiot. We understand that. He sits there and the people around him, they run circles around him and they tell him these are the things that they are going to do. But let me tell you this. Three years from now, we will drag Mr. Weir out of office. It will happen. And when we drag him out of office, all these crimes that have been committed, the violation of people's rights, we will prosecute George Weir for everything he does today. I want to make this promise to you. I will not be a talk show host in 2023. In 2024, when the next government comes to power, Henry Costa will not be on the radio. Henry Costa will be in power. 
will be in a position of authority and serious influence to make things happen. And I will ensure in my capacity as someone who will be in a very central figure position in power in 2024, January when we take office, we will ensure that George Manuel Weir does not get away. That Samuel Twer, that, Man that Nathaniel McGill, and that Patrick Sudo, people that Patrick Sudo will not work in the police force. You, they call Mr. Dumoy. They ask Mr. Dumoy to go to the LMP. Mr. Dumoy was asked to go to the LMP. Mr. Dumoy said, I will speak with my lawyer. He called me. I had the COP lawyer call Mr. Dumoy. They spoke. Mr. Dumoy, the, the lawyer agreed. I will bring my client. I will bring my client. So Mr. Councillor Finley Kanga escorted Mr. Dumoy to the Liberian National Police Headquarters. Escorted him. As is the case, Whenever a lawyer is requested to bring his client, the way they do it, the protocol is the client is not arrested at that time. Even if there are reasons to arrest the client, you do not call the lawyer and ask the lawyer to bring his client. Hmm? And then you what? And then what do you do? You arrest the client while the lawyer is present. No, that is not how it's done. When they ask you to accompany your client, they say, come and explain. Come and clarify what you meant by your post. Mr. Dumoy had already done that. He stated very cate categorically that he meant X, Y, and Z. He demonstrated that. So, the lawyer tells me the government has no case. It is the same lawyer who told me the government has no case against Yeke Koluba. And we won the case against the government. The same lawyer, Councillor Finley Kanga, the COP lawyer who represents Yeke is the same lawyer who told me that the government has had no case against Yeke. He's the same lawyer telling me now that the government has no case against Minipaka Dumoy. Absolutely no, no case. You know why? Because Mr. Dumoy did not call for the government to be violently overthrown by use of force, by means of force. He did not say that. He said, we need AK-47. And he said, I was speaking metaphorically what i meant is ak-47 is a symbol of resistance and that is exactly what i meant so now you tell me this lawyer has also assured me councillor finley kanga that the government has no case against many packet tomorrow i am proud and pleased to inform you that our man mr dumoy will be set free another issue is this even if mr dumoy did state categorically that the government, that people need AK-47 and they need to rise up and take up arm against the government. There is another thing on our laws. The government must be able to establish that the person who issues such a threat actually does have the capacity or the capability, actually does have the resources to be able to execute such a threat. Does many pocket Dumoy have the capacity to procure arms and mobilize men and be able to stage an insurgency, a militaristic insurgency against the state. No, he doesn't. So you see, the law is clear. The law says if a threat is made against the state, if the state believes that an individual citizen has issued a threat against the state, the state needs to determine, the state needs to discern, the state needs to assess the person's capability whether or not the person can actually carry out the threat. Does Dumoy have the capability to carry out such a threat? Even if he did make one. But that's not the case. Mr. Dumoy made no, no, no such threat. Mr. Dumoy did not say the state, the government should be overthrown. As useless and good for nothing as George Weir is, he didn't say that. He didn't say George Weir should be overthrown. That's not what he said. That is not what he said. But the issue here is this. The government is lazy. The government is stupid. The government suffers from insecurity. If I were president of the republic and somebody made a made a statement about people needing to take, I mean, to uh, people needing to 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 what we need is uh, AK-47, would I be bothered by that? I would not be bothered by that. But the government is insecure. You know why they're insecure? They're insecure because George Weah is a damn criminal. They're insecure because the people know George Weah for what he is. The thief from Gibraltar who came to power. Uh, on on high hopes of the Liberian people, believing him to be the guy who would redeem them, only for him to turn out to be the most 
uh, stupid criminal we've had in the history of the country. Stupid by that I mean he's building mansions in the in, right there in the face and broad day, broad daylight in open view, and the people are seeing it while they're suffering, and he's doing these things, and that is why the government is so afraid. They're afraid because they know what they do. If they knew they were as popular as they were when they came to power, they wouldn't do this now, but they can't because they know they're so scared. So I want to say to you. I call on all members of the Council of Patriots, as chairman of the COP, I call on you to go on social media, was launch a campaign, Free Dumoy, D-U-M-O-E, Free Dumoy. Go on social media and let's show them that we are strong. Free Dumoy, that is the movement that I'm launching as chairman of the COP, that our vice chair and our acting chairman, Mr. Mini Pocket Dumoy, is in police custody. They have not charged him. Uh, they do not know what charges they will bring up against him. And, and because there is no basis for any charges whatsoever. So that is my mandate that I'm issuing to you as your chairman. Go on social so, social media and, and, and let's launch the movement. Free Mini Pocket Dumoy. This insecure government, this stupid government will be a thing of the past on January uh, in January of 2024, 20, 20, George Weir will be on his knees before us and we will have the authority to make a decision as to what we do with him. And I can assure you, we will confiscate his pro properties. We will confiscate those of, of, uh, of, of Samuel Tue. We will confiscate those of uh, Nathaniel McGill. We will go after each and every one of, one of them, everything that they have amassed. Three years is no time. Corona has already eaten this year. We are about to be in 2021 and 2022 will, will be election year before you know it. I'm telling you, have faith. Many pocket Dumway will be free. The struggle continues. I'm Henry Pedro Costa, your chairman of the Council of Patriots, calling on you to rise to the occasion to, 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 to create a tsunami, an avalanche of free many pocket Dumway on Facebook. Thank you very much. God bless you. And I will give you update tomorrow when I get it. God bless you. Bye-bye.